Welcome to Mecham's Gone Farm and Vintage Tractor Auction, featuring the only classic tractor auction of its kind in the country. Today, some of the hardest to find tractors in the world will hit the auction block. So sit back and relax and enjoy Mecham's Gone Farm and Vintage Tractor Auction. Hello everyone and welcome back to Davenport, Iowa, right here from the Mississippi Valley Fairgrounds with Mecham's Gone Farm and Iowa Premier. I'm your host, Mike Holland, along with Max Wilson. And Max, you know plenty about tractors, but I'll tell you what, I've never seen this many tractors in one place so far in our show. No, and we've got just some really over-the-top restored tractors and then some of them that are still looking for a little bit of love, so it ought to be real interesting. Whether it's memorabilia or more than 300 tractors hitting the block, there's something for everyone, so don't go anywhere. We've got plenty to come right after this. Welcome back to the Mississippi Valley Fairgrounds in Davenport, Iowa. I'm Mike Holland along with Max Wilson and you're watching Mecham's Gone Farm in Iowa Premier. Let's get back to the action. John Deere 4020, we were talking about this earlier, Max. Yeah, and of course the 4020s, most of them were diesel. This one here is actually a gas, Mike. Uh, you see a few of them. Um, this one here, pretty nice straight tractor, got the narrow front on it, has the uh, fenders and the three point. Got that exhaust extension on it. Keep those fumes away from you as you're operating the tractor. As they were pulling in here, you heard the uh, driver there open the throttle up a little bit. Kind of a different sound when you're used to hearing that diesel sound. And then you come in with a gas, it's got a little more of a uh, different sound to it. A lot of action on this one. We've got movement over here in front of our desk. Outside, the, there's a, about three or four people uh, kind of going back and forth. This. The money on this one is moving fast. Yeah, and this is another one selling at no reserve, Mike, so they're bringing it in to sell it, so. Sitting at $5,500. As Max said, this one at no reserve. Just also as a reminder, not only the people here in this venue, which happens to be a packed house today, we have an entire desk in the back that's dedicated to our phone bidders and phone call-ins as well. And 4020 sold at $6,000, and that's gonna bring in lot S16. is a John Deere 430T. This one here's got front weights, three point, does not look like it has a third link with it, but new tires, wheel weights. Has had a complete nut and bolt restoration, Mike, so this thing's been gone through front to rear. Um, another beautiful restoration on it. And of course, these uh, Dubuque weights for the tricycle tractors with the taller rubber, they were kind of unique because they were real flat and real wide. I can't imagine what they weigh trying to set them up on there, but. Does have power steering on it as uh, Mike had just announced, or Matt, Matt, our auctioneer up there, just announced. And uh, just uh, right at seven thousand dollars now on this 1959 430T. And they are lining them up outside here of our Mississippi Valley Fairgrounds Center in Davenport, Iowa. Again, we want to thank everyone watching us via RFD TV. There's always something for everyone out here. Yeah, I've had a few people come up to me and tell me that they've seen tractors here. They don't see at the tractor shows half the time. It's just like coming to a tractor show and get to look at these tractors and get to see them come across the block and you actually get to hear a lot of them run. So uh, we're at $7,500 on this 430T. 
You look at the camera shot right there. A nice looking shot right over the hood. And this is one of those examples where the bid is going to go on, closing it out at 77.50. And that's going to bring us up to lot S17, which is a 1954 Farmall Super MTA. Yeah, and this one, Mike selling at no reserve, has the uh, wide front, and it's a Norton wide front, so it's an aftermarket wide front. But beautiful paint on this tractor, got new tires all the way around. Um, when it was coming in here, it was running nice and smooth, and actually if we sit there and take a look, you, that rain cap on there, he's got her idled down, that rain cap's just sitting there, just hovering over the top of that muffler. So. And that was a great shot of the this very quiet farm all running. As Max said, we hardly heard this one come in the door. Yeah, someone took some time on the paint work on this tractor, and it looks very nice. You can see it under the lights there as we're uh, panning out and away from the front end of it. We're working our way up to a $5,000 bid on this tractor, sitting at $47.50 right now. And, of course, our spotters running around the front looking for any action that they can in this very packed-out Davenport crowd. And I believe Lance just announced it's had the same owner for the last 40 years and just trying to give a little more history to that tractor of uh, what kind of life it's had. And Paul over there talking with the seller, trying to get any information that he can. And it does sell out at $4,900. That's going to bring us up to one of my favorites, Max. This is lot S18. This is an Oliver 1800 checkerboard. I love these Olivers when they hit the block. Yeah, and this one here is a gas restored with uh, four coats of paint. This is a no reserve auction on this tractor. And of course, when you're talking about 1800 checkerboard, that was the earlier design. You look at the decal on the side of it, and it looks like a checkerboard design on it. Also, they changed the front grills around. There were some differences with the dash and everything over the years, but um, a very nice looking Oliver 1800 gas right here. And, and it is selling at no reserve. I believe we've already said that, but I always like these big fenders on these things. And the three point, you notice those ropes going down on the back of this tractor to the three point arms. That was actually, the, that was like a first uh, attempt at a quick release. You could sit there and actually grab that and release it and lower the arms down and drive away from a piece of equipment. So, really surprised here, Max, at the how quiet these tractors have been so far. Yeah. We haven't had any, any, especially when you're dealing in the vintage line, sometimes it don't make a lot of noise coming in and out of here. A lot of them have had their mufflers on and they've been bringing them in under a low idle, so. And this one offered at a no reserve, sitting at $5,500, $5,600 now. be a nice little tractor take home if you had a few acres of hay to do there's plenty of power there run a nine foot hay bind or run your disc or do whatever you need to do so and some last minute action right here in front of our booth And it's selling out at $5,900. Bringing us up to lot S19. This is a John Deere 630, of course, with the famous front end John Deere look there, Max. Yeah, and these here, of course, when they redesigned them around the sheet metal and everything, it really made these tractors pop with that yellow sideboard. This one here with three point recent restoration, like new tires, and it does have power steering that works very well. And it's amazing how many of these 30 series we do see coming across the block here at Mecham, and they always are a real good crowd pleaser. This one here also selling at no reserve, so it's going to a new home. Uh, 
I'm sure you folks at home like watching what we do here at the live venue, but this is there's a lot of strategy going on here when you're putting off this bids and, and when to actually place the bid, how long to wait for a bid, make sure that you're getting the best price possible. Don't go away, we'll be right back. Seven Farmall 350. Another nice looking restoration on this. Uh, new tires, has a fast hitch on it, and dual hydraulics. So, kind of a well optioned 350 here. Making a good use, of course, of that famous red and white combination Farmall's been known for. Yeah, I've always liked the looks of these uh, 50 series farm all tractors, especially that narrow front and that white grill and the white sides. This one here would be a good candidate for taking to a parade and running around or take it on tractor drive. I know those are always nice driving tractors, so sitting at $5,000. And it's going to sell at $5,000. And that's going to bring us up to lot S20.1. This is a 1946 John Deere B. I like these backs. Yeah, the B's are a nice little bread and butter type tractor, easy to handle, nice to drive. Um, of course, 46, this one here has got the long hood on it with the battery and the electric starting the starter up on the top. When they, a little bit later when they change them around, they move the starter around down onto the bottom, kind of clean up the top of that main case on the tractor. This one here has a new battery, new uh, tires all the way around, and lights on it, so does have the power lift on the back. And the reserve has just been pulled on this tractor at about $2,300. And it's going to sell out over Ryan's way for $2,300. Bringing up lot S21. This is a 1956 John Deere 50. It's got newer tires on it, Max. Yeah, newer tires on it. Uh, does have a float ride seat on it. So Mr. Farmer at some point decided to upgrade the old type seat to the uh, float ride that's used on the 20 series. <laughs> and Lance sitting there talking, they just made an announcement tractor runs out nice and everything, but there is a little bit of an issue with the transmission, needs some adjustment. No, won't go in reverse. And Lance goes, well, if you're a good operator, you don't need reverse. So. <laughs> um, real nice paint job on this tractor with the fenders and the, and the new tires on it. Um, selling at no reserve. And of course the 50 took the place of the Model B John Deere, so. Still going on this $2,800 bid on this John Deere 50. And this one's selling out to no reserve. And if that adjustment to get this tractor in reverse is a small fix, someone's going to get themselves a great deal. Just selling out at $3,100. Bringing us to lot S22. This is a 1939 John Deere H. Yeah, and of course, 1939, the first year for the Model H. This one has uh, the power takeoff on it, also has the fenders on it. Um, good rubber on it all the way around. Uh, looks like it may be original rubber on it. it. Looks like a little bit older restoration, but tractor as it came in here sounded good. Had that typical little John Deere H uh, pop to it, so. And 
And as always, I like those exposed flywheels on these John Deere's. It's just kind of another design dimension that I like to look for. Yeah, it's always neat to see that stuff on the outside moving. Uh, of course, my son, he'll be two in February, and he loves watching that. Anything that will spin right now, he's fascinated with. So he loves seeing those out there and spinning around while those tractors are running. We are 32 and a half on that 1939 John Deere H. And that one's going to hold as the bid goes on, bringing us to lot S23. This is a John Deere G. This one has a wider front there, Max. Yeah, this one here has got the wide front PTO on it. Uh, also has the aftermarket power steering on it. Pretty uh, nice running tractor. Of course, the G's have kind of gotten the fondness for them now, too. Uh, and of course, we had that low radiator G come through earlier. This, of course, is a little bit later version with the uh, tin work on it and the wide front. So. We got a shot of Big Paul there talking to the owner quick. This one also has fenders on it, if I hadn't brought that up before. Reaching the $3,500 mark. This enthusiastic bidding crowd. We are packed out here in our facility at the Mississippi Valley Fairgrounds in Davenport, Iowa. Of course, not just the people here are bidding on these tractors. We've also got phone call in bids. There's really make sure that we're reaching top dollar anytime you have a Mecham Gone Farming auction. And that's going to be a conditional sale on that G at 3750. I got to get a hold of the owner. And that's going to bring in lot S24 as a John Deere 730 gas, has a factory wide front, new rear tires, has a three point with the third link, PTO, and the deluxe fenders on it. Pretty nice looking tractor coming through here, Mike. And of course, 730 diesels have always been a hot seller. It'll be interesting to see where this uh, 730 gas goes. So. And of course, the 730, that was the uh, later version of the John Deere Model G we just saw coming through here. Would have been the last version before they came out with the uh, uh, new generation tractors. Lance is up there rattling off the bid on this one. $4,900 right now on that uh, 730 gas. $5,200 bid now. 53, and the reserve has just come off on that 730 gas. 
It's going to sell $5,400 Kathy's way. And that's going to bring us up to lot S25. This is a 1964 John Deere 3020 LP standard. As you like to say, Max, this one's still in its work clothes. Yep, still in its work clothes. I was kind of walking around this and admiring it. It's actually in pretty straight shape yet. Some surface rust on it, but it is one of 76 propane standards built. So kind of the start of our rare uh, tractors here. 1964 is unique because the original lights are attached to the frame of the tractor as opposed to being mounted on the fenders. There are only 25 of them made with this configuration. Dual hydraulics, three-point tractor is 100% complete. And as you can see, it run in here under its own power, decent tires on it, and selling at no reserve. So. Coming out of the gate at $4,000 bid. Yeah, pretty nice original tractor, and on the rare side, one of 76 built from 64 to 68, and and there were only 25 made with the lights set up the way they are, the headlights on this tractor. We've got Big Paul up there uh, working with the uh, seller. And the auctioneer just reiterating what you just said, Max. It's only one of 25 that were actually made this way. And of course, Paul, he's talking with the seller up there just to kind of help out and get some more information on what's going on with this tractor, because it is selling at no reserve. Of course, you can smell that propane uh, exhaust right now, a little bit different smelling than uh, what we've got coming through here with the gas and the diesel tractors. So, and that is one of our feature tractors. So, Still working on this 3020 LP. And still getting some late action on it. Already hitting the $6,200 mark. Someone's certainly seeing the value here. And it sells it out at $6,200. And just like a prize fighter, Max, we're bringing in lot S26. It's a 1959 John Deere 630, and I'll tell you, a lot of eyes were on this one. Yeah, this is another one of our feature tractors right here. This one has factory downswept exhaust or the rear exhaust on it. Also has the factory demonstrator seat on it. If you notice, that seat seems a little bit wide. It's not a matter of that guy is that small. That seat was actually made. That was for the dealerships to uh, demonstrate the tractor and the uh, dealership personnel, whether it be the mechanic or the salesman, could ride with the uh, potential buyer and kind of show them the features and the options. Has new intake and exhaust manifold, it has PTO fenders, the umbrella, power steering, and all the hydraulics work. So looks like a newer set of tires, kind of a unique tractor. You don't see many of them that came from the factory with that downswept exhaust. And that would have been for uh, getting into some of your uh, low slung buildings or whatever. Bidding already fierce on this one, hitting the $6,500 mark. Excuse me, dollar mark, quickly. And hitting over the $7,300 mark. And with the reserve on that one, they're going to close it out at the $7,300 mark.
welcome back to Mickham's Gone Farming. Bringing us up to lot S27. Max, this is a 1953 Ford Golden Jubilee. I like the looks of these tractors. Yeah, and of course the Golden Jubilee, that, uh, that replaced the uh, M series. Uh, these were uh, kind of made for the uh, 50th anniversary of the Ford company in the tractor business. Uh, has a toolbox in the step, which is very unusual on these tractors. New paint, showroom quality, and good rubber all the way around. You see that three point on the back there. And uh, that one, when it come through, I mean, it sounds just like a little sewing machine as it rolled in here. Paint must be fairly new as there's a little bit of smoke coming off the exhaust, so. And these tractors here, I always like them with that big bullet uh, emblem right there in the front that we're getting a look at right now with the shot from the front. And these were all these nice, smooth running little tractors and a lot of fun to drive around on. So we get a good shot of the mechanicals there. And just lifted off the reserve from the seller. Big Paul talking with him directly. And I believe that might spur on some more interest, knowing that you can actually get this tractor if you're presenting the highest bid. $43.50 is what that one sells for. A great price for that tractor, bringing us to lot S28. This is a 1953 Farmall Super H. Yeah, and once again, another no reserve auction on a Farmall Super H. Another good looking tractor here. Good tires all the way around, paint on it. The paint on it is uh, actually really nice looking. I always like the, that IH logo on the front of the Supers. And uh, this one here, a little bit earlier version of the Super H still has the uh, battery up underneath the fuel tank and has the uh, original H front bolster on it. So. I believe this is another one of them that was sitting in our uh, feature area, sitting inside the building here. Of course, our camera crew giving you a great shot of what that looks like. There's the front of the hood. $2,600. That's going to bring in another unique tractor here, low hour. This is S29, is 1983 John Deere 4050. One owner with 645 original hours on it. Always garage kept in a climate control building, original condition, has a front weights, three point and PTO. I was uh, examining this tractor fairly close and it was pretty nice. I mean, you get walking around, everything on this tractor is dead original, so. And of course the 50 series tractors have been really hot as far as uh, prices and everything. The used values on these have been great. And right now we're at a $30,000 bid on this tractor already with very low hours. I would think with where this would probably be going is into a museum with that low hours. Already at $35,000 now. And getting some quick late movement on this one. Already reaching $40,000. And I figured this tractor would be pretty popular and go for a 
fairly uh, decent price here with uh, the low hours on it and it being uh, one owner and garage kept all its life. So. And this certainly is going to be one of our top sellers so far of the auction. With a lot of tractors to go. And we've got Big Paul and Dan back there working with Ben Meekham. I believe they've got a phone bid or uh, internet bid on it right now. I believe we've also got a, oh, they were working with the seller back there and the reserve has just been pulled on that tractor. We're at uh, 42.5 on this tractor right now. And that's going to go for a record $42,500 here at the Iowa Premier in Davenport, Iowa. And they're bringing in the next lot here. This is going to be lot S30, which is a 1934 John Deere GPO. This is a different look at tractor, Max. This is also getting a lot of attention. Yeah, the John Deere GPO is a, a pretty rare orchard tractor, one of 177 built. Um, this one here is the start of the Richard Nelson collection. Uh, serial number on this tractor is 0-1560. 15460, sorry about that. Ship date March 20th, 1934 to Syracuse, New York. Restored by Richard Nelson's company, Nelson Historical Vehicle Restoration. Factory steel fronts with guide bands and new factory rear steel wheels with new lugs. Newly restored with every detail, including radiator core, grill and curtain, engine, rebuild engine with restored brass carburetor magneto. Richard has won every show entered over the past five years. Number 48 of the 177 built. Two-cylinder documentation on it, so a good chance here to buy a good tractor, and this is also selling at no reserve, Mike, so uh, he's got the confidence that uh, Meekum's going to get it done for him. So. Absolutely no seat left. They are lining up the side walls here at the Mississippi Valley Fairground Center, all along the indoor and the outdoor of where we're hitting the block, and our spotters are busy. They are running back and forth, making sure that no bidder is going unnoticed. And as the crowd gets uh, heavier in here, it makes it a little bit harder to keep track of the bids and everything, so. We're 15,750 on this GP Orchard. And it sells out at 15,750. As Max said, that was a no reserve tractor. That's going to bring us up to lot S31, another just a rare tractor. It's a 1932 John Deere GPWT top steer. Yeah, actually, I believe we just skipped ahead to S32, actually, Mike. And uh, that one there, granted, it's still a GP wide tread, but this one here is a uh, what they call a crossover. It's number 34, a 60 built, 1930 model. Serial number on this is 402074. Tractor number 34 of 68. The crossover has the first big bore engine with the six inch bore with the sudden change to the bigger engine. The manifold was not built to accommodate the carburetor as it opposed the, as it opposed the exhaust. The John Deere was made a, made a specific downdraft tube which directly attached the air filter in front of the flathead engine and behind the radiator. So that's where the crossover comes from is that you got that tube coming all the way across. Uh, now, very, very I, unique tractor here. So I do want to remind our viewers, it's fantastic having Max here. Max would notice if, I, if we have a difference between one tractor that had three bolts and one that had four, he'd be able to spot the difference right, right up to the block. Thank you for that, Max. Yep, no problem. And this one, uh, this one here is also from the Richard Nelson collection. Yeah, 
and Reserve has just come off of this tractor at $23,000. This is probably one of the first GP crossovers I've ever seen, so. And actually running out pretty good as it's sitting here in front of the block. Uh, the full steel wheels and uh, spade lugs on it, so. There's a nice shot of that hood as it's rolling by. We got a uh, some phone bidding action back here in the back. Looks like he holds the bid right now with Travis back there and David Purvis. And making its way out of this building at $24,000. And that, now we're going to step back one here, Mike, and this is actually going to be lot S31, which is a 1932 GPW top steer. Only 340 built in 1932. Um, serial number 404858, number 88 of the 340 total built in uh, 1932. This is two-cylinder documented. Shipped February 29th, 1932 to Moline, Illinois, so just across the river here. Complete restoration by Nelson Historical Vehicles. New rebuilt engine, restored with every detail and most original parts. Original brass carburetor and Wyco mag. This is probably one of the most unique tractors that, left jo that John Deere has ever built. It is known to be the first over the hood steering and one of the first tricycle tractors built by John Deere. And this actually was uh, their first start into the regular row crop configuration the Cullivate in two rows. And we're at 25,000, looking for 25,000 now. We got a $20,000 bid. A couple of very unique GPs we're seeing come across the block here, so. Still some interest here, wasting no time, a lot of late movement. We still have the late movement back and forth, now hitting $26,500. I think this very astute crowd is recognizing the value of this John Deere and what's actually in front of them. Yeah, pretty unique tractor here. And uh, now we just hit $28,000 on this top steer, GP wide tread. Paul and Dan are still over here talking. And the bid is going to go on even at that price. is well underway and things are looking great. I'm here with Robbie and Samantha and they sold some John Deere's today. Tell me, what, what were we selling and what, how'd they go? We sold a GP Orchard, John Deere GP Orchard and a uh, John Deere Top Steer and a John Deere Crossover. And they all sold pretty good other than the Top Steer. It didn't get up to the reserve price. So we ended up not selling it today. So that one's coming home with you? Yep, I think we're gonna have to bring it home. So is that something that you'll bring back in April or? Yeah, so hopefully we can bring it back in April and somebody else will be interested in it. Excellent. Now, I hear that you have about 50 tractors back home anyways. Tell me about what you've got. Yes, we got all John Deere. We don't mess with anything but John Deere. <laughs> yeah, we got all kinds of tractors. Have a first serial number, VW John Deere. And uh, we have another top steer at home. And uh, just a bunch of GPs, all steel wheel stuff, older. 338. Excellent. So um, you are here, and are you just a supporter, or are you in the game? Well, I'm a supporter. I help work on the tractors. I'm pretty much all around just mechanic. <laughs> Excellent. So it sounds like you've got yourself a pretty good girl here. Yeah, sure do. <laughs> Great. Well, good luck, and thank you so much for talking to us today. All righty. Thank you. All right. Perfect. Well, now we're going to go back to the auction floor and see what's selling. Talat S33, this is a 1934 John Deere A. 
Yeah, and of course, this first year production, this is selling at no reserve, first per, first year production John Deere Model A. So actually the tractor you just saw roll out of here, that GP wide tread with the top steer, this is what it eventually became, and the rear tread on this tractor was a lot easier to adjust. And of course, with the open fan shaft on it, it's uh, talking about behind the water, the upper water pipe to the uh, governor. The shaft was actually open. You could see it spinning right there. And uh, this is an early one with a serial number 411 446, two cylinder certified. This tractor was first shipped to Clearwater, Nebraska to a John Deere dealership. Soon after it, was ar it, was ar it arrived, it was shipped to Waco, Texas, where it was used as a somewhat of a prototype experimental aid during the testing process. The complete brake assembly broke off, causing John Deere to remove the entire rear casting of the tractor. They used what they had available, which was an AO chassis. So kind of got a unique history to this tractor here. It was actually on the experimental farm and had some damage done to it and then repaired by Deere with an AO main case and then given this serial number later on in life. So Sitting right now at $4,000. And it is selling at no reserves. So. And this once again is from the Richard Nelson collection. So. Working at five thousand dollars, and we just got fifty-two fifty bid on the tractor, fifty-five hundred. Now, fifty-five hundred dollars on that open fan shaft A. And that's going to bring us up to lot S34, 1955 John Deere 40V. And, of course, the 40V was kind of the in-between. 40 vegetable is kind of what it stood for as an in-between high crop. Um, only 259 of them made, completely rebuilt engine. Uh, fresh restora restoration does have the cultivator rigs on the front of it and three-point hitch with the drawbar on the back. So beautiful restoration on it. Looks like it probably has the original rear tires on it. And this one pretty much right out of the gate. We're already at 7,500 bid on this tractor. Just hit ten thousand dollars on this forty V. Bid's gonna go on on that tractor at ten thousand dollars. It takes fifteen thousand to get it bought. Well, that's going to do it for today's show. You've been watching Meekum's Gone Farming Iowa premiere right here on RFD-TV. I'm Mike Holland along with Max Wilson, and folks, we'll see you next time.